Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. And this month we have been talking about poetry as a source of inspiration, <clears throat> excuse me, for our art journaling. And I'm loving watching my journal fill up with so many beautiful pages inspired by different poems. And I had this insight yesterday that I really wanted to bring in a poem by Rumi because I hadn't done that yet. And so I went on a fun hunt this morning to look for a Rumi poem that was one I wasn't familiar with. There's a lot of Rumi poems that I love. The Guest House is a famous one. It's great for inspiration for art journaling. And so I stumbled in my search across a poem that also seems to be well, well known by others anyway, called Unfold Your Own Myth. And I was thinking about this poem and thinking about the work that I do with people around personal mythology and discovering our stories and that idea of unfold your myth and how that's connected to finding your creative voice. And finding your creative voice to me means finding your authentic style, but bringing the wholeness of who you are to the art journal page. So that's the theme that we're going to be exploring today through the lens of Rumi and an art journal page. So grab an art journal. There is a link in the description of the video to the words of the poem. But I'm super excited to dive in today with a little bit of Rumi. As always, if you're joining me live, pop into the chat and say hello. Thank you so much. I'm always so grateful for those who join me live. And if you're watching the replay, thank you. Also, it means the world to me to have people stop by and um, watch my videos, even if it's just for a few minutes. And I encourage you and invite you to please click that like button. If you like what I'm up to, that will help other people stop by and encourage them to watch as well. Good morning, Leslie. So I'm going to switch my screen here. And we're going to dive in this morning. I'm going to take a sip of tea real quick here and clear my throat. So bear with me. have to have a nice clear throat for reading poetry. Buenos dias, Julie. Great to see you as well. So our poem today, and I got some weird lines showing up on my screen this morning, so bear with me for just a second, figuring out what's up with my tech. So our poem this mo morning is <clears throat> by Rumi. Good morning, Judy. Great to see you. And uh, Rumi, like Emily Dickinson, who we looked at yesterday, didn't title his poems. And he died in, I think, 1293. Hola, Blanca. Great to see you here. <clears throat> I can't remember if he was born or died in 1293, but he was writing a really long time ago. He was a Persian mystic and poet who a lot of his poems are about connecting to the divine and the love of God. But this one's really about finding our own story. <clears throat> so this has been titled in modern day times, Unfold Your Own Myth by Rumi. Who gets up early to discover the moment light begins? Who finds us here circling, bewildered like atoms? Who comes to a spring thirsty and sees the moon reflected in it? Who, like Jacob blind with grief and age, smells the shirt of his lost son and can see again? Who lets a bucket down and brings up a flowing prophet? Or like Moses goes for fire and finds what burns inside the sunrise? Jesus slips into a house to escape enemies and opens a door to the other world. Solomon cuts open a fish, and there's a gold ring. Omar storms in to kill the prophet and leaves with blessings. Chase a deer and end up everywhere. An oyster opens his mouth to swallow one drop. Now there's a pearl. A vagrant wanders empty rooms. 
suddenly he's wealthy. But don't be satisfied with stories, how things have gone with others. Unfold your own myth without complicated explanation so everyone will understand the passage we have opened you. Start walking toward shams. Your legs will get heavy and tired. Then comes a moment of feeling the wings you've grown lifting. Unfold Your Own Myth by Rumi. And one of the things I love about this poem, so he was writing in the 1300s, and there's references to so many different religious tra traditions in this poem. He's pulling stories from so many different places. And he's sharing uh, bits of folklore and myth. The link I shared in the description to the poem actually <clears throat> goes into detail about some of the different stories. So Jacob and also the um, who lets a bucket down and brings up a flowing prophet. Those were both from the stories of Joseph, right? Moses in the burning bush. Um, he said the you know the deer is a common myth of people chasing the deer into the woods and finding something even better than the deer. So lots of beautiful, rich mythology. But the point of the poem is to not let other people's stories be ours. And so I hear from a lot of people when it comes to art and creativity that we get really caught up in wondering, what's my style? Well, as we read other people's stories, as we go on a journey of self-discovery, as we explore and play with many different styles, that's how we find our voice. We find our voice in the doing and the being on the page. Yes, Georgia, I see. And um, rather than in looking, but we can also find our voice and our style by looking at our own art and what we've created. Even though I create in so many different styles, there's elements and often colors, I mean, this one has the, you know, um, similar palettes all the way throughout. It has similar imagery, and yet no two pages are alike. But if I flip through this whole book, I start to get glimpses of my own style. So doing a retrospective of your own art making over the years is a really powerful way to start to discover your own voice. You're never going to discover it outside of you. You're going to discover it inside of you through practice and play and through copying what others have done, right? And there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm taking this wonderful class right now on how to create an arty book pitch, and it's just giving me so many ideas and ways to approach the page and how to make that my own. It's really interesting, right, to, to think about this journey. And as I was reading this poem, I love this. So apparently Shams was his mentor who just disappeared, and, and Rumi was often on a quest to, to find this person again. And um, I don't know what George is doing over there, but she's making a lot of noise this morning. <clears throat> and I love, he says, don't be satisfied with stories, how things have gone with others. Unfold your own myth without complicated explanation so everyone will understand the passage we have opened you. And I think there's a word missing there that should be we have opened for you. And that feeling of our legs getting tired on the journey, on the quest, in the seeking, and then coming, that moment comes of feeling the wings you've grown lifting. And I love the always the theme of roots and wings and feeling both. And so again, it's about exploration, and it's so much about play on the page and not taking ourselves too seriously. I almost wanted to bring the black and white in today from last night's uh, studio session. That was super fun for me to bring it, be in that black and white, but I also felt called to color. So I pulled a little bit of a different palette this morning. I also printed out a silhouette of a woman walking because there is that sense of the seeker on a quest to find her own story. And so that was sort of the theme that I was thinking about. I'm having fun in this journal working with silhouettes. So I wanted to continue that theme of the silhouette. So I used her, I don't know, two or three times now, but decided it was time for a different silhouette 
And so I want to just kind of do, and good morning, Kay, an abstract idea of a path. And I'm going to do my normal sort of flowy painting that you've seen me do before. And I want to just get some movement on the page in color. This is one of my styles that I use most often when I am working on a painting. And so I would encourage you this morning to think about what's the thing that you love to do when you're first starting a piece? What's kind of the arty background? Is it writing? I haven't been doing as much writing lately. But there is that sense of movement. And I'm wanting to just come in and connote movement on the page. And this could be done in color. This could be done in black and white. It could be done with Zentangle. But if we, I want to just have that, you know, that idea. There's also always that, you know, feeling of how our stories circle in and out upon themselves, right? And it also felt like there was, you know, this idea maybe of a mountain range you know, and we're so we're on this path and on this journey. And so sometimes we just have to dive into the blank page and start. I never know exactly where I'm going. And so if you feel stuck wondering what your style is, like one of my private clients, we've been working on this a lot. Actually, several of my private clients recently, this was one of the things that we have worked on the most is that process of self-discovery through art. Who am I? What's my style? What is my unique creative expression that I want to bring to the world? And it's such a powerful question to ask. And I find that we can rarely find the answer by thinking our way through it. It's one of the reasons I love working with poetry, because it can give us clues. Right? For me, there's this idea again of roots and wings that shows up over and over again in my own work and teaching and writing and it stems and flows from the idea of how important it is to me to stay grounded and calm and centered and yet my dreams are lofty and big I want to be able to spread my wings and not get carried away Right, And so I also think about root stories, which is what we're going to be working on in our visual journaling club class today, is about our root stories. What are those, you know, so maybe there's some roots flowing down in here. What are the root stories that keep us tethered in both positive and shadowy ways? that maybe stop us from believing in ourselves and believing even that, you know, finding our own voice is possible. So again, the way to find your creative voice is through exploration and play, through imitation of other styles and ultimately combining, right, the, the things, the elements that you love, leaning into the, the palettes that you love. And I always like to say, you can't get this stuff wrong, right? There's Because there is no right when you're on the creative path. There's no right. There's only your path. And so I'm taking this class on this arty book pitch. And she's so inspiring and just such um, a lovely teacher. She's a an agent and illustrator. In fact, she publishes some of my favorite artists. Um, I was also drawn to a few weeks ago, we used the air dry clay to, to make some of these shapes and I was drawn to maybe this leaf shape showing up on the page today. And um, this morning I was catching up on a couple of videos and she was talking about that specific thing about, you know, it's not about copying what other people are doing but it's about borrowing from the ideas. You know, these days in art, there's really nothing new under the sun. Everything is simply a variation of something that has come before. And so it's okay. In fact, Austin Kleon, who is one of my favorite writers about creativity, 
has a book called Steal Like an Artist, and it is such a great book on finding your creative voice. And he talks about that idea of, you know, just borrowing from others until you have found your own voice. And also to remember, and this is key, is that your voice will find you. That you really can't go hunting for it. All you can do is keep practicing, keep expressing yourself, keep sharing and showing your work like we talked about yesterday, and suddenly you'll have that moment, and it won't be a lightning strike. It'll be a slow and gradual evolution across time. And you'll say, oh, there it is. Here's my style. It's taken me years to get to a place where I didn't feel like I was worried of creative voice, where... I am more excited about the expression and the personal journey and less worried about having a cohesive style. And that's because I'm not interested in making art to sell, right? If I was making art to sell, I would be creating collections and working on palettes and voice. And I love working on all of that, but not in any really consistent way, right? Not in any really consistent way. I love dabbling and playing and expressing. And if you were to look at my big paintings on canvas, that voice is really clear. And I'm very happy with that voice and with my style of painting. I have two different styles that tend to show up over and over again. And I'm just painting away here. I'm, I'm not really sure yet where this is going, and I'm just trusting the process. But in my art journal is the place to explore, to experiment, <coughs> excuse me, and to meet myself on the page. It was so crazy windy here and has stirred up lots of dust. <coughs> so I'm noticing that in my allergies this morning, so my apologies. All right. I'm wanting maybe some blue flowing and some different colors coming in. I'm kind of digging these mountains here. And the sense of this person being on this path and on this journey, so the story is starting to come clear. And maybe the verse from the poem about unfold your own myth will be here on the page somewhere. So again, letting the story tell itself. I think so often we try too hard to tell the story, to find the story, and one of the things that uh, Lilla Rogers said in this class I'm taking, and I just lost my train of thought, what did she say about the, the story? It's something about letting the story find you, that you can't force it, right? Is that um, we have to be in that intuitive connection to ourselves and that just sort of inner knowing and space of trust. I'm working on this deer painting, and the painting was actually started by my friend Dina, and she gifted me a bunch of canvas this last week, and um, it's all purples and green, so now I'm finding, I'm, I'm like, okay, I love purple and green together. So wanting some of that purple and green. Just mixing and blending on the page. Kind of digging these mountains, and maybe we're going to get some little clouds in the sky up here. And we're usually drawn to particular colors, and you will notice a certain colors and palette 
show up in your work over and over again, but sometimes it's really valuable to change the palette. We learn new things, we discover new things when we mix up and vary our palette. So stretch yourself to try different colors sometimes, different color combinations. Get a color wheel or make a color wheel. I'm wanting maybe some brighter green. Uh, I love making color wheels. And keep it near you when you're creating so you can look at what are the complementary colors. What are the colors that are side by side on the color wheel? What could I try that might be different, like a split complementary, which are the colors not directly opposite, but either side of the opposite complementary color. Okay, that's not gonna show up very well. Let's mix these together. My friend Sherry, who was here painting with me this weekend, always inspires me to mix my own colors. I think that was one of her biggest takeaways that she talks about from having gone to, to art school was to mix her own colors. And to not even mix them on the palette, but she often just mixes them right on the canvas. So simple picture, capturing that just illusion of a landscape here. It's not perfect, right? But it's capturing the, the essential feeling of what it is that I want to be communicating here, that there's this windy path, that there's, you know, it's, it's mountainous, there's lots of room to travel. Maybe we'll get some trees in the foregrounds of our mountains here. Got some interesting colors on my palette. So just creating that, you know, little bit of an abstract landscape so things are darker or lighter usually in the in the foreground and certainly clearer but everything here is intended to be in the distance feels like a very moody landscape oh i like having some of that white in there so let's just maybe add that in a few different places We're going to Yellowstone with my daughter and her partner this summer, which I'm excited about. I haven't been to Yellowstone in, I don't know, 30. Well, Brad and I have been married 27 years next week. And uh, that was one of the things we did on our honeymoon was go to the Tetons in Yellowstone. But half the fun of going to Yellowstone from here is we'll get to drive through the Tetons, the Grand Tetons, which is one of my favorite mountain ranges. I love the Rocky Mountains where I live, but the Tetons are very different. And they make my heart happy, so I can't wait to drive through there and just even look at them in the distance. Bring some of that purple back. And my path is a little bit like a river. So what's everyone else working on this morning? You guys are quiet this morning. But what are you thinking about in this sort of conversation on unfold your own myth? You know, seek the story that's seeking you. Right? Seek the story that's seeking you. mountains up a little bit.
All right, so love this super simple landscape, this idea of traveling through this landscape on the quest, seeking my own myth, my own story, my own adventures. No one else can travel this road for me, right? No one can travel this word, this this road for me. And I think I'm going to cut her out. And she's not going to stay black. I think maybe I'll paint some purple over the black. But first I'm going to let this dry here for a minute and do a little bit of fussy cutting. Nice. Finishing up yesterday's collage. Beautiful. What are other people working? Again, I think this idea of just exploring voice, right? And how the poem so beautifully illustrates. There's so many amazing stories out there, right? And he shared some really iconic ones about Joseph and Omar and Moses and the burning bush. But those are not our stories, right? They're not our stories. And so I think it's important to look at what is my story? What is the road I'm traveling? And not just the road that lies ahead, but also the road that lies behind. Where have I been? What am I carrying with me? There was one silhouette where there was a, looked like a young woman kind of hunched over with this really heavy backpack and you know it was like she's not traveling light and I realized for my journey I want this idea of traveling lightly. And I love the image of the wings as well. Oh thank you Julie. I appreciate that. It's a fun way to do our personal growth work, especially for those of us that, you know, we've done a lot of work. We've had the therapy, right? Um, we figured out what those root stories are. We've done a lot of our own healing, and yet we know we're not done. And we're looking forward toward what's next, or we're looking for bringing all those pieces of ourselves together into a beautiful new sense of wholeness and integrity. All right, we get her on the, oh, maybe she needs to be white. That's interesting. You were horrified. Blanca, I love that. Mixing um, the color violet, mixing 64 colors from the main color. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's a it's a powerful process to go through. Mixing your own colors is really really fun and challenging experience. Okay, let's get a little bit of gesso on her here, and how about a piece of sketch paper? I like maybe that she's now just a little bit gray, so she's going to be a little bit shadowy. She has paint all over her from the page. Now there's a sense of lightness instead of heaviness to the image that I really like. Georgia, nope, you can't come over here, sweetheart. She's trying to climb through all the painty mess to see what's going on. Yep, I like her in white. That feels really good. So I'm going to get this page nice and dry, and then I'm going to take my matte medium to get her glued down to the page.
All right, let's make sure we got most of that off. I think there's still some places where I laid it on pretty thickly. Just if there's any little bits left there, I think we got it all. And get some matte medium. Get our little character put into the story. And then we can see if there's anything else that needs to happen. This is one where it feels like there's a lot of mystery to the story and the discovery, not a lot of sort of knowing yet, right? And so I think, you know, working with silhouettes, that sort of just little bit of shadowy, not knowing she's part of the landscape still, but she's walking along this edge here. And now I can start to see a few little spots that I might want to just come in and touch up a little bit. And maybe find a different brush. A small brush. So once the paint is nice and dry, then we can come back in and touch things up, give them more definition. We can see where the edges of things are a little bit better. And I like that it's just that little bit of abstract, right? It doesn't need to be all super detailed. Again, I'm capturing the intention. I'm working with marks and colors. She's got a little bit of color in her. She's faded a little bit into the page, but overall I'm pretty pleased with the simplicity and this idea of unfolding my own myth, being the seeker on the quest, being on that journey. And let me find a white Posca. Make sure that's nice and dry, and I want to add that one stanza about unfolding your myth to the page. In the path is where I'm going to put it. So, but don't be satisfied. I love writing out poems in my own hand as well. It's an, another um, way to just work intimately with the poem and to understand the words. It does, Marion. Great idea. The dull side of aluminum foil works great as a mirror. I love that. But don't be satisfied with stories. And I'm not trying to keep it in the verse format here. Unfold your own myth. I love mine. And I love the line that says, without complicated explanation, right? Like, we don't need to tell a big old story. That was what I was going to say about Lilla Rogers. She was talking a lot about show, don't tell. Show the story. Don't tell the story. And about how we can use art and imagery to show the story. We can also use it to tap into our unconscious so the story gets shown to us. And as humans, we tend to overcomplicate everything. So 
letting their art speak for itself. Don't be satisfied with stories, how things have gone with others. Unfold your own myth without complicated explanation so everyone will understand the passage we have opened for you. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful poem. Simple, simple page. Keep wanting these mountains up here just to have just a, a tiny bit more definition. Oh, doesn't need that little bit of extra white there. All right, that one came together really quickly. Really love this. Love this poem. So this is one of those long poems. I am going to want to make sure I have it in my journal and it's not going to quite fit. So I will take one of those envelopes we made a while back and get that tucked away into my journal. I'm trying to make sure I incorporate <clears throat> the entirety of each poem into the book. And tomorrow we're going to have a poem that a friend of mine shared on Facebook. Um, I don't know the name or the author, but she did send me the, the source. But we have a really beautiful poem for our last day of poetry and art journaling. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do in May yet. We'll see how the spirit moves me, but it's been a, a fun month of exploration. So we'll have one more day of poetry tomorrow and then just a reminder I am out of town all next week so there won't be any lives next week but I will be back uh, the last Monday in April. So have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you for joining me and exploring this beautiful poem by Rumi, Unfold Your Own Myth. And I um, hope that you have some fun unfolding your own myth and story in the pages of your art journal. Many blessings. See you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.